the Barbie movie is finally here, and it's already a massive hit. The highly anticipated comedy crushed it at the box office on its opening weekend, making $155 million in theaters across North America. The movie stars Margot Robbie as Barbie and Ryan Gosling as Ken, and features lots of other actors portraying dolls in Barbie Land, including Issa Rae, Kate McKinnon, Michael Sarah, and Simu Liu. America Ferreira also stars as Gloria. For those who haven't seen Barbie yet, and those who have and want even more behind-the-scenes details, Access Hollywood is breaking down everything you need to know about the movie. We're looking back on everything the star-studded cast and director Greta Gerwig teased to us about the film and the stories they spilled about their time making it. In interviews all filmed before the SAG after strike, the cast discussed their incredible costumes and transformations, their colorful performances, their fun bonding moments on set, and all the fan theories that emerged about the plot. Margot also told us her two must-haves for the movie, and Ryan revealed how his kids helped him prepare for a crucial scene. The first moment you look in that mirror and you're Barbie, you're Ken, what was the thought that came to mind? Well, in Barbie land, we don't actually have reflective surfaces. So when we look <laughs> in the right. mirror, it's just a see-through yeah. thing. Circle. But I do, I do remember the first time I was fully kitted out as Barbie. And I did have that kind of giddy moment of like, Oh, I look so pretty. Wow, this, yeah. I, I felt great. And I was kind of, we were talking a lot about like the vibe in Barbie Land and stuff. And I was like, it's kind of like every day is your wedding day mm. or like your day you go to prom. Whatever day where you felt just amazing because you had your hair done and your makeup done, you had the outfit that you'd planned for ages and you're just like got something really exciting coming up that night. Yeah. Totally. That feeling is every day in Barbie Land. <laughs> yeah, that's, and that's how you felt. Get out of my head. Kind of. <laughs> get out of right. right. my mind. Living there rent free. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. You just were like, wow, it's like my wedding day. Every yeah. day. Yeah. Every day. <laughs> But what? he's a Ken, it's maybe a little different. I don't want to right. speak on behalf of Ken. I was like, is Barbie gonna like this? <laughs> um, does this work with what Barbie's wearing? <laughs> Way to go method. Kind of. No, I got it Barbie in my tiny shorts stressed. and I think my first thought was, I don't think I have to shave my legs. <laughs> I think my, I'm pretty, I think I'm good. Yeah. And then I got to set and Greta was like, I think we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna, gonna need to do that. Chibi we were all having, all the Kens were having that conversation. Yeah. I think your hair's really fine, man. I yeah. can't see it. I don't think, <laughs> it is an HD. It is like wow. 60 mil. Mm. Yeah. I love the moral support between the Kens. <laughs> oh, it was real. It's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. There's so many incredible costumes, so much nostalgia, right? For the people who genuinely grew up loving their Barbies. There were so many fun references, sort of yeah. like inside jokes, if you will. Um, when you think about all of those, was there a favorite look, a favorite costume, anything that kind of took you back to your, if you had them, Barbie days? I, I I didn't have a ton of Barbies growing up, okay. but I did have the dream house, the fold out yeah. dream house. I got that one Christmas and it was the greatest thing ever. And when we started the movie, you know, when Greta first came on board and we spoke about, you know, what, sh what are we gonna do? I said, I just, there's just two things. She was like, what do you want there to be in the movie? And I was like, I just have two requests. And she was like, okay, sure. And I was like, a slide that goes from her bedroom down to the pool <laughs> and a mermaid Barbie. And look, if Done. you can make both those things happen in the movie, I'll be the happiest girl in the world. She's like, really? That's it? That like any? And I like, was like, no, else. just those two things. No please. writer, no snacks, no nope, nothing. Just those, those two things. things. And rest assured, they're both in the movie. There we go. Yeah, I love that for you. Yeah. <laughs> you mentioned shaving the legs. You brought big Ken energy. Big Kennergy, I guess I should say. We just fused mm -hmm. that together. That's what um, you say. <laughs> what was the process like for you? I mean, the bleach blonde tips. Uh -huh. It was given '90s boy band. I was here for it. What'd yeah. you think? I just went back to my 12-year-old self, and yeah. I was like, "I'm gonna need your help for this." <laughs> and he was like, "You abandoned me a long time ago, dude." And I was like, "I'm sorry about that, but let's <laughs> let's bring it together for Barbie, shall yeah. we? We'll work it out later." And that you did. <laughs> that you did. Well, bravo. <laughs> And now, what I did love was it obviously, it also tackles some really important topics too, right? I mean, you get death, you get disillusionment, you get the patriarchy, you get women in power. I want to talk about the theme of disillusionment though, because Barbie goes through some of that, obviously, I won't give too much away. Has there ever been a time in your life, young, old, now, doesn't matter, when you expected one thing and it was something entirely different from what you expected? That's an interesting question. I, I distinctly remember the first time that I realized adults lie. Mm. And I suddenly thought, this life is way more complicated than I thought. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, they don't know what they're doing? And they're making it up as they go along and Oh, and just, you mean and you were younger, like a Yeah, I was I was a kid that. realizing that. Wow, and I was okay. like, I caught an adult, like caught them in their lies sort of thing, and I just yeah. sat there and I was like, 
well, life just got a whole lot scarier. Right. Like the adults don't actually know what they're doing either. That's real. That's terrifying. That is terrifying. <laughs> but that's kind of life. Yeah. yeah. It's it's kind of terrifying, and we not, we don't all know what we're doing, yeah. but we're trying, and that's beautiful. Absolutely. Well said. So true. Mm. Ryan, was there ever a moment like that in your uh, life? Adults lying. Adults lying. <laughs> when did, was that just like, <laughs> was that a yeah, yesterday was thing? Say exactly. definitely, yeah, definitely adults lying. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Still, yeah. <laughs> Still. There's a theme. There's a pattern yeah, here. Yeah. Get out of my head, man. <laughs> what is up? You two. Something in this Barbie swoon. We're just. <laughs> <laughs> no chemistry here, by the way. No, no. Our, no our minds have melted yeah. at this point. Just what? Yeah. Just we what? Really bonded that, on the adults' line. There's the Barbie cohesive. <laughs> Great thought. What was the, the first impression on set? You guys hit the ground rolling. What was that vibe like between the two of you? How'd you build the chemistry, if you had to? I, get, I mean, if I may go first. What was the first thing? My first thought was, because when we were doing rehearsals, yeah. you were kind of more mm. like pulled back with how you were playing everything. And I remember thinking in my head, I was like, oh, okay, he's going to play it a little more reserved. I should calibrate my performance so that, like, the, you know. I was doing the same thing. I was like, well, she's going to play it back. I'm Shut up. Back. No, you weren't. Yeah, I'm not going to go crazy. She's not going to go crazy. I feel like I couldn't think of her. Like, <laughs> Anyways, and then we got on set on day one, and Ryan went so, like, 150%. Just and I was just like, I was like, <laughs> buckle up. We're going on a ride. He's going big. I'm going big. And it was really fun. I love it. I love it. Was that the plan, Ryan? You're like, I'm just going to hit the ground running day one. She's going to step it up. I don't know what happened, honestly. It's all a blur. <laughs> Greta and Margot just did some kind of like, you know, they, they conjured this out of me somehow. Yeah. I blame them. It's your fault. It's and your I'm fault, very Margo. grateful. It is. Thank you. It is. <laughs> and obviously we've got the iconic foot, right? Like the arch. But what I want to know... They are my feet, by the way. There's been some queries online, and I just want to clarify. There go my barbecue. They're glasses. my feet. Shut it down. These are your feet. They're my feet. Thank you. Thank you, Ken, such a gent. Yeah. They taught you well in Barbie yeah. land. There's a couple other Kens in the room that didn't do anything. <laughs> yeah. We'll talk oh, about this later, Ken. fellas. Wow. <laughs> All right? The king of the Kens. Back to Ken school. <laughs> <laughs> so those are your feet. They are You're, my you feet. You have the cutest little tattoo that we've seen. Did you cover it up? Yeah, covered it with makeup. Okay. Yep. I was like, Not that hard campaign to, do. to just keep it in. No. Barbie with the tat, I'd be here No, for it. I know. All my tattoos, not that I have many, but they're all on my left foot. Uh -huh. um, and I keep it that way because I don't want to spend more time in the makeup trailer in the mornings, oh, really. Okay. In fact, I'm trying to get some of them removed because I was like, it's an extra 10 minutes. And you need um, sleep. I need that. Just, I yeah. need beauty sleep, Barbie. I feel and, you, girl. <laughs> if you don't, I'm not waking up in Barbie land every day. You don't look that good. <laughs> you need sleep. That 10 minutes matters. I mean, it matters. It. Yeah. And now I got to ask, the kids, have they watched? They're a little young for this, but yeah. will they eventually watch? Are you getting cool points? They know you're in the film. Yeah, they, they do know I'm in the film. Mm -hmm. They've been so supportive, and, yeah. you know, they I, 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 like, crib so many things from them They were that they do and put it in the film. And yeah. there's also, like, you know, if you saw the film, there's, like, a part at the end that I had to, like, rehearse a lot for. Oh, And I was doing time. it at home, and so they knew... It better than I did, and uh -huh. they came to set when I did it, and they were off camera, like, coaching me. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, job well done. They're incredible coaches. Mm. You Thank did your you. Thing. I'll tell them. Okay, I'll be waiting for the album to drop, by the way. <laughs> I'm very impressed, both of you. Margot Robbie calls you up. Yeah. Pitches a live-action version of Barbie. Yes. Initial reaction. Well, my initial reaction was, she was saying, do I want to write it? Mm -hmm. um, and I loved Margot, and I knew I... I, I, I was I think she's an extraordinary actor, but I'd also been talking to her as a producer and I love the work she's done with her company and Lucky yeah. Chap and I just have been only so impressed by her every time I, I've I've interacted with her and I thought, Well, if I, I would ever do this, it would be like let's do it for Margot and yeah. um and then once Noah and I had written the script, I then I thought, Well, I don't really want anyone else to direct it. Um <laughs> so I, I then I had to ask her if I could direct it. <laughs> And then she said, yes, come direct yeah. it. Um, but it was really, it was Margot. It was Margot that was thrilling to me. And then the idea of trying to make something about Barbie was, um, it was just such a head scratcher, it felt exciting. Right. Because I was like, well, how do I even start? Where do we even start? Exactly. And that was the thing that I kept thinking the entire time I'm watching the film was like, where did they start? Like, how do you eat? You have Barbie, and now what? It's this world that we've never seen. No, adapted I, in that way. Honestly, it was something that all the way through production, uh, I was very. I benefited from having a really long pre-production period yeah. 
I was talking to the set designer, the the cinematographer, and the costume designer for a year before we even started official prep, okay. because everything had to be figured out. Because it was like, how are we even going to begin to accomplish <laughs> this? And what are the rules? And what does it look like? And yeah. um, so it, it it was a it was definitely something where it, it presented just every day a different challenge, but in that way it's so fun because I got to figure it out with some of the smartest minds mm -hmm. in cinema. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, well, how are we gonna do it? Right, right, and of course Margot, incredible as Barbie, stereotypical Barbie, but nothing yes. stereotypical about this woman. No. Um, what would you say made her the perfect Barbie outside of the obvious stuff? She looks yeah. the part, but. Well, you know, she and Ryan and all, and all the actors, but the, the, there's a, there's a quality where they're finding the humor through the truth and mm -hmm. through taking it seriously, and they're never making fun of it, and they're never standing outside of it. And honestly, when it comes to Margot, it she really is the most wonderful person. <laughs> like yeah. she's beautiful and smart and kind and funny mm -hmm. and just like everything you hope she is, she is. Yeah. And um. I realized when I um, finally got to meet her mom, who came to the set of Barbie, when I met her mom, who's a, an angel, I was like, of course you're this way. This mm. is how your mom is. And there was something about in her performance of Barbie that I also felt like it was like her her mom in oh, a way. And there was like I some see. connection. And I, I, anyway, I just, I couldn't love Margot more. And so it's like that, that part of her that just you you just want to root for her yeah always absolutely. and it's being reported that there were 40 different costumes that margot had in this yeah that sounds right <laughs> that feel about right yeah um how hands-on if at all were you in helping to like navigate those fashions yes. and also like what that communicates about barbie oh yeah no the fact the fashion was like it, it, again i'd been talking to jacqueline for a really long time and we had you know barbie was invented in 1959 so we sort of had from 1959 until now to kind of pick all of the moments we wanted to emphasize yeah. that from the history but also we had to make it our own and make it work for the film i think you know margot's so precise about costumes that it was actually really fun for me because I, I didn't have to be quite as neurotic as I usually would be because <laughs> okay. I was like, Margo's extremely neurotic yeah. about all of this. This she's is good. We can, all, we can all, uh, I can relax a little bit and know that she's extremely stressed out. Yeah. Um, but it, it, yeah, it was, it was, it was sort of, one thing I wanted to capture with the Barbies is that they are dressing out of this sense of um, just, confidence and fun the way honestly when I think of eight year old girls playing dress up yeah they dress they don't they don't they, they don't hold back at all yeah. they're like I'm wearing the feather boa and the tiara and the pearls and the heels mm -hmm. and the bag oh. and the and gloves and like <laughs> you're like oh you did it all and then they <laughs> exactly. and then they stand with their hands on their hips and they they almost like the louder it is the happier they are mm -hmm. And I wanted to access that kind of feeling for all of the Barbies of mm -hmm. just like, even with, you know, Issa as president, yeah. we talked about like, what if you wore a ball gown as president? Why wouldn't you? Right. And there was something about that sort of like childish, like do the biggest, brightest thing you can think of and just do it confidently mm -hmm. that I think sometimes uh, as adults we can lose because we try to be proper. Mm -hmm. And um, I wanted it to feel fun in that way. Yeah, well, it certainly did feel very fun. So <laughs> mission accomplished. Um, you know, Ryan said that you were really the one he should credit with bleaching the hair <laughs> for, oh, for no, the film. No, he right? did it on his own. He, he did it on his own? Okay, look at no, 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 no. I mean, he's always... I, no, he did it... Uh, he... We talked about the the blondness of Ken, uh -huh. but he um, he really committed full <laughs> steam because we were looking at different versions, and then he just came one day and he was like, "I've done it," yeah. and I was like, "Oh my goodness, <laughs> you done. certainly have!" Yeah. But yeah, I mean, that's the thing about Margot and and Ryan; they just commit one hundred and fifty percent, and so really, you just have to be there to capture it mm. because they're already creating something so incredible, right? And this Barbie sleepover, Greta. Yes. What can you tell me about the Barbie sleepover? What I can tell you is that Ryan could not come, but he did send a bagpiper. 
Um, and to the, to uh, serenade. Just, he, th there was a knock on the door. We were all in our like pink pajamas, doing everything, and we were like, "Who could that be?" And we opened the door, and there's a man in a full Scottish kilt who played the bagpipes for us, and then recited a speech from Braveheart, and said, "I'm sorry, what?" Yes, and then he said, "Ryan sends his love," and then he left. We couldn't Into the night. believe it. Like it was the most incredible thing anyone has done. It was like. I, I couldn't explain why it was so perfect, but it was so yeah. perfect, and it was just, um, it was really special. That is It was incredible. a really special moment. Yeah. I love I loved to hear that. I would never I don't imagine. even know how he located a back <laughs> right. right. or like, where, where did we book the guy? Yeah, but okay. n now that I'm friends with him, it makes total sense. It's uh. exactly his sense of humor, and I, he's just the kind of person who can locate a bag bagpiper. There it is, and we yeah. love him for it. You get the call that you're going to play Barbie, or Alan. <laughs> right. What was that like in that first moment for you? Um, just like the privilege of a lifetime, honestly. Like yeah. when I heard that Greta was doing it, I was like... <laughs> you're kidding me. <laughs> what? <laughs> and you're calling me? Right. I think that's what I actually said. And um, did they tell you in that same call that you were playing weird Barbie? Uh, yes, and then I went, oh, <laughs> what? Kind of like that. Similar to that? Okay, got it. I, I've got a visual. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Michael? Yeah, I made a noise kind of like that. <laughs> kind of like that. Yeah, similar. Isa? Yeah, similar. I I had less sounds. My word, I was my breath was taken away, okay. and I was just really excited about you know the prospect of, of playing a Barbie. I never yeah. imagined that for yeah. myself. Mm. I mean, and to speak to that just a little bit more, never having imagined it, and to now be a part of it and in such a front row center way. What does that mean to you? Just period, particularly from the lens of representation. For me, it just feels like a Letterman's jacket in a mm. way, where it's just like, oh, I can claim, you know. I, yeah. I, played for a pink team. I don't know, it just feels cool to be a part, especially thinking about, you know, who the cast is, and um, it just feels like we're part of something special, mm -hmm. and um, hopefully more to come. Absolutely. Now, how much say did each of you have in your characters, in the type of Barbie or Alan that you are? Um, well, for me, the script was, like, all there. Like, mm -hmm. I didn't feel the need to change or add to anything it was like so fully realized right. and we just talked about what the look would be and that was such a fun back and forth of imagining uh -huh. what sort of the only question was like usually weird barbies are naked and so i i was well, like sorry. should i be right. like yeah. fully splayed and like <laughs> she was like I don't think that's the tone of the film and I was like right. okay what don't you want about that but you know and we had a big fight but then it was she convinced me you know wear clothes and I was like fine yeah. your movie your career yeah your movie, yeah. Your career. <laughs> exactly. uh, the split I mean how much <laughs> How much stretching was involved preparing for this role? I mean, at a certain point, this has to be CGI, right? Those like, were fake splits. Okay. It was one leg was real, one was hidden, okay. and then there was a fake that, leg. Wonderful. Here. I love Incredible. that. Um, so I can't, I can't do much I just, more. <laughs> that was already pretty I, good. I, I want you to own that you did these splits in a movie, please, <laughs> just once. Wait, did she really? Yeah, she did. She Kate. is so. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. <laughs> she is the most flexible person I've ever met in mind and spirit and body. Yeah. In mind, spirit, and body. Mm -hmm. It's holistic flexibility. That's yeah. a beautiful thing. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I was like, You sure you want me in clothes? And she was like, Yes. <laughs> and I was like, Okay. So you kept but... revisiting it, sort of thing. Every... Yeah. Just kept checking in. Uh -huh. That was still the mandate. <laughs> Cause like this would be really cool right now. So sure, <laughs> can we just try it out? <laughs> we did, but no, it's yeah. hard no. Okay. Well, it, it turned out how it should have, and I <laughs> thought everyone was brilliant in it. Um, let's talk about President Barbie for a minute here. Um, talk to me a little bit about that character, right? And also, I heard that you played a hand in President being in a ball gown. Is that right? Yes. Um, Greta was very much um, open to President Barbie's wardrobe and. You know how she presented herself, who she was. I think, like to Kate's point, she was just super collaborative, and yeah. uh, she also had us each imagine who was playing with our individual Barbies. Mm. So I envisioned mm. my my childhood self 
Um, Hari's was my favorite. You know, her Barbie is a gay man who collects Barbies. Okay. And so, oh, that's to me, <laughs> yes, that's who's playing with her or, or okay. has her on the shelf. Okay. Um, so I, I just, for me, I, I, I thought too small. Uh, you know, <laughs> after that I heard that. <laughs> Gotta think big. Gotta, Gotta think, think big. big. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Barbie and Ken, obviously, Ryan and Margot. Uh, what was it like seeing them on set? Why are they the perfect Barbie and Ken for this? They're beautiful people. Yeah. They look like chiseled dolls to begin with, <laughs> yeah. um, but they're also <laughs> just so personable and you you could watch them all day. It was really, really fun. I think one of my, my first or second day was just watching Ryan find Ken mm -hmm. <laughs> and play, play with his voice and play mm -hmm. with his emotions. And it was, mm -hmm. no one else could have embodied that Ken the way he did. Yeah. Yeah. Right. There's one day where Ryan has a monologue where he's wearing a fur jacket. Yep. And oh, yes, that was. We did a lot. I mean, we did it, I think, over two or three days, actually. And we all basically were just watching Ryan do this monologue over and over. And it was really incredible. Yeah. Really, it just it, after every take, we were just like, "Oh my god, yeah. I cannot believe what I'm seeing, yeah. what he's doing." I can only imagine yeah. what that looked like up close and personal. Yeah. It was great as a viewer to really see the cool. final iteration of it. Yeah. Um, I'm curious for you, though, Michael. Okay, so someone's playing with the Allen doll. Mm -hmm. Who's that? Mm. Someone um, <laughs> who likes to probably hide in the corner and okay. just have their little Alan and yeah, hang, hang out. Alan. And Alan doesn't demand too much mm -hmm. from them or mm -hmm. from their imagination. <laughs> he, he could just be there. <laughs> He's sort of just a presence. <laughs> the kid who doesn't want to think too hard about what they're doing. <laughs> This is gonna kill me because the laughing is eating time and I can't <laughs> Oh, okay. No, thank you for painting that picture. I, I see that yeah. child and I want to give them a hug. You know that guy. Yeah, yeah, I think we all do. Yeah. Um, we heard about the Barbie sleepover. That sounded pretty epic. What can you tell us about the Barbie sleepover? We heard the kids were invited, but they had to go. Yeah. The ladies got to party through the night. I think you're talking to the three people who didn't go. I was, go. Yeah. No, I wasn't in oh. town. I'm just hearing about it. Yeah. Oh. Oh. It was, I, I heard about it on the day. I heard it was really fun. I yeah. was like, good for you guys. You know, Barbie click, fine. Barbie bitches wow. had a great, a great time. No, I was happy for them. It seemed like a great bonding opportunity. Uh -huh. <laughs> for for the, those who were involved. For yes, all yes. Yeah. Okay, now yes. I wouldn't have. Before I'd arrived. Wait, what? I think I had arrived into into town just a few days after, and I was hearing Same. about it. Oh, I was hearing okay. rumblings of it. It was supposed to be really fun. Yeah. Okay. Allegedly, <laughs> supposedly. Yeah. Okay. Um, Barbie, did you have one growing up? Play with Barbies? Um, I did not have Barbies. No. I had seashells, oh. rocks. Okay. Uh, stuffed animals, stethoscopes, okay. you know, <laughs> I, I don't know. I had it all, <laughs> just, just not Barbie. Just not a Barbie. I, but, uh, I would have, I would have fit a Barbie into all that. It would have sure. added some color. What did you, what did you do with the rocks? Um, just sort of arrange them, <laughs> as one does. Yeah, just made scenes, just scenes for myself. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go. The rapping. <laughs> You look amazing, and I have to say, this is a little bit of a plot twist. So tell us which, you're not in pink, which vintage um, Barbie look are you channeling tonight? This is Barbie's solo in the spotlight, Barbie. Yeah, and done by Scaparelli. <laughs> Insane. I am obsessed. I feel like you have been killing literally every single press tour look that we see. We Right when we think it doesn't get better, it does. It's insane. I've got more to show you. Just wait. Okay, a little teaser for the fans. I'm obsessed. But I love that everyone's picking up on the, the references that we're imbuing in all these looks. That's fun. For sure, and I know I a mean, lot. We've had a lot of fun. We didn't know if everyone else would get as much of a kick out of it as we are getting, but I'm glad to see they are. I, I mean, everyone's loving it. Have you had a favorite look? I know it's kind of like picking your favorite child. I honestly, I don't know. Every, every new city we go to, I get to do a whole new Barbie reference, and then it's my new favorite. So right now, this is my favorite. Okay. Good. Well, you have a good reason for that. It looks amazing. How many costumes were there in this film? And again, is there a favorite costume? I honestly couldn't pick a favorite costume, and I don't even know how many costume changes I have, but dozens. A lot. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, okay, so this is a good little throwback we have for you. This is you in 2009, if you want to show the camera real quick, at the Australian Nickelodeon Kids' Choice. I feel like it's very Barbie. Was this a little like foreshadowing? This is my first. It is very Barbie. Um, this was like my first red carpet, I think. 
Uh, I did my own hair and makeup and I bought that dress, I think, the day before. Yeah. You had the Barbie style in you, even back in 2009, yeah. which is amazing. This now feels inevitable, yeah. Last question before you get out of here. Are we ever going to see you in pink again from tonight? I'm guessing no. Uh, we've still got, like I said, a few more looks to show you. It'll be more pink this summer. I'm We're living for it yet. I feel like you've really brought your Kennergy all over the world on this press tour. What is the secret to anyone at home who wants to nail their own Kennergy? Kennergy is hard to define. It just, uh, it's different, I think, in everyone. Just you got to find your own and tap into it and, and ride the wave. You know, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. Um, what can you tease for the fans at home who's maybe something that they haven't seen yet about your character and about really reimagining Barbie in this way in the film? I wouldn't know what to say except just the, the beauty of this film is that it's there's something for everyone. It's really like a party that everyone's invited to. It's 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 like uh, there's so many layers to it and, and you could have uh, your own journey every time. It's, it's very... Uh, it's just very fun and complicated and easy and simple and beautiful. It's a lot of things. It's a lot of great things. Yeah. Um, so Greta was obviously raving about your performance. She said it was like Marlon Brando meets Gene Wilder meets John Travolta. John Travolta specifically, I need to know why John? Is it that amazing dance scene that we see? I don't know. You'd have to ask her. I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm just, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm still in shock that she said all those things. And then lastly, we need to know your wife, Ava, obviously raves about you on Instagram. No one goes harder for you on Instagram than her, which I love, a loyal, loyal moment. Um, she said you're the greatest actor that she's ever worked with. What does that mean to you? It means everything. It means everything. Is it surreal for you being here? I'm sure. I, I, I am so, I, I'm starstruck right now. I'm so starstruck. So, you yeah. you got your own film, which I love. Yeah, I mean, I've. Uh, for, by everybody, the actors, but also all the musicians. Uh, I can't, it's, it's, it's outrageous. They just keep coming, it's insane. Um, I love that you're channeling Barbie Pink tonight. Are you channeling like a specific Barbie as inspo? Yeah, director Barbie. I'm director Barbie, that's right. <laughs> Barbie is the greatest Barbie that I've ever seen. I need to know, I don't know if you're on TikTok, I don't know if you're familiarizing yourself with the fan theories, but there's a lot of theories going on. And one of them is that America Ferreira is wearing black and white all over the press tour because it's like the reverse of the Wizard of Oz. Like when Barbie comes to the real world, it's neutral. What do you think about this? Well, first of all, I have to say, Traveling the world with America and Margot, they just both look so incredible every day. Uh, so all of it, I'm always like, you and you, what's going on? But um, I mean, I will say America is amazing in the movie. She might be bringing a dose of reality to Barbie. So we'll see. The teaser we didn't know we needed. Okay, I love. Um, I know you talked about when you were growing up, your mom wasn't really like a huge fan of Barbie. So I just wanted to know, what do you think the biggest misconception is about Barbie? And how are you really changing that with this film? Yeah, well, I guess since the time I was a little girl, I knew about Barbie and I knew the arguments against Barbie in the same breath. I knew the whole thing. And I think mostly just that like, you know, the icon that Barbie is, her interest, what's interesting about her is her complexity, not her perfection. And I think that's what we try to really dig into with the movie. I love it. Last question. Fans are already calling for a Barbie 2 before the first one's even out. That's how hyped up this is going. What do we think about that? We got to get this movie out. We got to get it out. We're going to see it in theaters and then I'll then I'll then I'll think about what's next. But right now I'm just like July 21st baby. Fair enough. And then this is such an all-star cast but also so many cameos. Is there a favorite cameo in the film? Yes, but I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> there is a theory floating around, which you're kind of debunking tonight. Do you know about this? I've heard a lot of theories, so I don't know. Okay, I'll tell you the theory. So basically the theory is that you've been wearing black and white on the press charts. You've been looking amazing, by the way, because it's kind of a reverse Wizard of Oz. And when you enter the real world, it's more muted tone. So you're kind of embodying that on the press tour. What do you have to say about that? Obviously it's not true because you're in Barbie Pink tonight. Okay, I love the fans and I love how much they're paying attention and how excited they are and the stories they're creating are really fun. It's probably really entertaining for you. You're like, I know the real story, but I can relive it now through your eyes. It's very entertaining and I wouldn't want to give anything away ahead of time. I mean, not tonight, not before the world premiere. 
I love that this movie really like reimagines Barbie. There's also an incredible sisterhood in the film. We've seen you guys just everywhere on the press tour. What does it mean to work with this specific group of women, including Greta, the director? Well, Greta and Margot's involvement is why I wanted to be a part of it. Um, I never imagined being part of a Barbie movie, but when I knew Greta and Margot were involved, I just knew that they would bring their deep intelligence and talent and humor and heart, and they did. And the script was remarkable, and I felt so deeply honored that Greta wanted me to be Gloria. And, you know, to watch them work, to watch Greta direct, she's a She's a phenomenal visionary, and I learned so much watching her. Do you have any tips or tricks for channeling your own energy? Uh, 11,000 push-ups every morning, all right? Uh, green juice, um, acai bowl, no. I, everyone, energy means something different to everybody, and I think that's the, that's the important message about energy is that you look within yourself, and you find what it is that makes you feel like you're at your absolute best, and you do that thing, you be unapologetic about it. You stand in that light and you and you energize yourself. It's happening right in front of me. I feel honored to watch it. Um, <laughs> I know that Greta made the Kens work out together to bond. So I need to know who did you bond with the most over some crunches, some curls, some push-ups maybe? Look, ev all the, you know, it was so amazing working out with each and every one of them. I will say, I'll, I'll just give a shout out to Ryan because it was impossible to beat him to the gym. He was always there before me. And uh, it was it was also impossible to leave after him. Like he, he was just the man was a workout machine. It was crazy. Uh, loved loved bonding with him with with all of the other Kens. Scott and I. This is not a bonding thing. Scott and I developed quite a, a ping pong rivalry. Cause you know, there's a song. Love the song. Hits every time. It's always a slay. Um, who is that? Is that Mike? Well, you were, I guess you I gave away the surprise. I, I was going to show right you. Your doll, I mean, what is your reaction to this? And I need to know who would win in a beach off, you or Ken Gosling? I mean, I'm, come on, I'm not going to come up here and tell you in my full Kennergy state that, that, that Ken Gosling is going to, is a match for this. I mean, I got to, I, I got to bet on myself. Have you I mean, seen the Barbie before? I, I, I have seen it. I have seen it. Every time, though, I, I hold it in my hand, I'm struck by how amazing his hair is. It's so perfectly coiffed. Loki kind of jealous. Well, thank you for saying that. But there is definitely a difference in the length of the legs. I really wish that I had legs this long. He's just, a, he's just, he's a, these are insane proportions, I, I gotta say. He's pristine. Okay, so as a competitive dancer, I need to know, were you like low-key judging during the iconic dancing? And who surprised you the most with the best moves, other than yourself, of course? <laughs> I can't, you know, I can't throw my fellow Kens under the bus like that. Um, I would say this. I stumbled upon a YouTube video of Mr. Ryan Gosling uh, dancing as a part of the Mickey Mouse Club a few years ago, and I and I, I think that surprised me. I was like, that that man is a shockingly good dancer. That was all you needed to see. Absolutely, absolutely. This look is insane. I'm obsessed. Tell me, what Barbie are you channeling tonight? What's the inspo? I am a channeling President Barbie, which means I'm channeling also so many of the Barbies throughout the decades. But you know, I had to rock the pink. People are crazy about Barbie and pink. And I felt like if you're not wearing pink, you're getting attacked. And well, it's a good thing you wore pink tonight. Yeah, that would have been. God. I see nice. Ryan's got on pink too. He understood me. And America even has on pink today. Wow. Well, you know, there's been some theories floating around about her wearing black and white. Have you heard the theories? The theories are that it's like Wizard of Oz type reverse. Like when you come to the real world, you're in neutral tones, and that's why she's wearing black and white. What do you think about that? I think that that is an excellent theory. I want to know what she's going to say about that, but I'm going to, even if she says that's not true, it is true. The fans are excited. They're invested. Okay, so this film celebrates so much, you know, sisterhood and feminism, which I love. What, you know, about this particular group of women, like, really stuck out to you, and why did you enjoy working with them so much? Oh, my God. This was such an incredible experience, specifically because, you know, Greta's energy just radiates throughout the set. She's such a wonderful person and a visionary. And Margot, you know, producing the film, being such a talented actress. Like, everybody was so generous and incredible. Um, so it was just a pleasure to work with people who I'm fans of, who are also just nice, cool people. 
I'm obsessed with you in the dance scene. Iconic. I need to know, did it come naturally or was there a lot of rehearsal that went into that? Girl, you have no idea. The pain that I went to, does it come naturally? Absolutely not. It was my first day. I learned the dance 24 hours. No, literally three hours before we shot. And it was it was a nightmare. But I'm glad that it comes across well. It was your first day. Um, yeah, my first day in front of everybody. It was the worst. That is insane. Um, okay, if there's a Barbie too, will we be seeing President Barbie come into her second term? What can we expect from that? What would you like to see from that? I hope that Barbie has, Barbie, President Barbie has unlimited terms. That's something I have to take up with Greta. Um, but yeah, I would love to come back for a, another Barbie movie, many Barbie movies. It was just such a fun time. Like I want to live in Barbie land. Last question. Do you, have you seen your Barbie yet? First of all, here she is right here. Oh, this is my girl. My mom is harassing me for one. She's like, where is my President Barbie? And I'm like, I got you. So I'm just going to. I was going to be like, I would give that to you, but it doesn't belong to me. Jen, if you're watching this, can she have it, please? Mom, um, she doesn't want to give you this, so it's on her. Okay. If it were up to me, it would be yours in a heartbeat. Okay, we have one last question for you. If you'll read this, it also pertains to your Barbie, if you want to read it. I'll ask you the camera. Be honest, did you take anything from set, and do you still own this ball gown? I stupidly did not take anything from set. I was trying to be like a good person, but I would have stolen everything in President Barbie's Oval Office had I known, because they wouldn't miss it. They had stuff in drawers that you couldn't even see on camera. So I should have just stolen it. Lesson learned, don't be so respectful. Yeah, and for the sequel, which hopefully I'm part of, I'll steal everything.